came in from the outside. An announcer and the worst one in history at that. I guess Mick never heard of Mike Adamley. I hate this channel. These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. Hey there, I'm Social Justice Warrior V Infuso, and today I'm gonna talk about the worst general manager. Nay, the worst on-screen authority figure in all of wrestling history. No, I'm not talking about Bret Hart. He was too boring. If you put the letter S in front of Hitman, you've had my exact opinion of Bret Hart. No, I'm not talking about Palmer Cannon, he was far too forgettable. No, I'm not talking about Tiffany, she was too bland, and just, there was, no, there was nothing happening there. And no, I'm not talking about Hornswoggle, because he doesn't even really count. And while being boring, being forgettable, and being bland are all bad qualities in an authority figure, uh, well, except for John Laurinaitis, that guy, that guy's a fucking stud. The worst quality, or maybe <laughs> the best for the wrong reasons, is one that's memorably bad. Someone who is so bad that their time becomes unforgettable. We're talking the Batman and Robin of authority figures. We're talking the E.T. on Atari of wrestling characters. We're talking, of course, about Mike Adamley. Mike Adamley was a former NFL player, football announcer, and co-host of American Gladiators. He also covered the Summer Olympics on two occasions. At Wrigley Field, the Blackhawks' Patrick Kane was wearing a light breast, a uh, breast, light brace on his left wrist. We're flirting with the NFL. Who's headed to the NFC and AFC championship games? And why the Blackhawks need to come out smoking when the 48-game season begins next Saturday. Field St. Louis on the break of not making the playoffs till last night's 13-0 shack sh shellacking from the Giants. Regular season against the New York Knicks. They the New York Knicks. He began working with the WWE initially as an interviewer and debuted at the 2008 Royal Rumble. And it was all downhill from his first night in. Immediately making the mistake of calling Jeff Hardy, Jeff Harvey. Another man who's been waiting anxiously with anticipation, his name is Jeff Harvey. Hardy. I accidentally called Jeff Hardy, Jeff Harvey. But then again, maybe he wasn't as wrong as we thought. Mandela! I want to believe. You see, everybody in this world makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. JR and King, of course, John Cena is looking to reclaim the WWE Championship. Six of Raw's greatest superstars will compete in the WWE's perhaps most bar bar barbaric and feared event. It was clear from the get-go that this guy was out of his element. Forget it, you're out of your element. You're out of your element. <laughs> wow. But despite this, his abilities apparently impressed someone backstage because he was then promoted to color commentator, taking over the chair of the iconic Joey Styles on commentary. These were some big shoes to fill, and it was clear that Mike had much smaller feet. That wasn't that wasn't a dick joke. Just just so we're clear, that wasn't that's not what I, I, I wasn't I wasn't saying. I don't know. Maybe he's packing. I I don't know. You're making me crazy, Kofi. One, two, three. That's it. Uno, dos, adios. And we've got to give credit to Jimmy. Jimmy Wang, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. I'm Mike Adamley alongside the Taz. This was a man who was cast out to sea without ever learning how to swim. This was a man out of his comfort zone as he spent his entire time as the new voice of ECW, constantly making mistakes or very bad dad puns. And come on, let's be honest, if wrestling fans wanted to listen to some know-nothing spewing incorrect information and lame jokes, then my channel would have a lot more subscribers. Again, I know it's been said, but this guy was brought in to replace Joey Styles, one of the greatest commentators of all time. Gone. Bye-bye. See you later. Replaced by a guy who didn't know a camel clutch from a camel toe. Who made this call? Whose idea was this? Here 
was me! Oh, yeah, no, of course, that, now, now, it makes, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense to me. The guy was put on TV so we'd hear him talk, but he didn't know what he was talking about. He was a voice, but he, he, he just didn't know what to say. On one particular episode of ECW, Mike was so overwhelmed by the crowd that he'd leave the commentary booth early and head to the back. Now, some speculate that this was Adam Lee having a bit of a panic attack, while others claim that Vince called for Adam Lee to join him backstage out of the blue in an effort to end the show on a cliffhanger. Except here's the problem. No one liked hearing Mike commentate. Him leaving isn't a cliffhanger, it, it's a means for applause. And while not too many people clapped their hands in the audience, that's only because no one in the audience could hear him speak. How I envy them. But everyone at home, let me assure you, was giving him a standing ovation. Yet despite his terrible work on commentary, apparently someone backstage was impressed. And yet again, he was promoted. This time to Raw General Manager. The new General Manager for Raw. Mike Adamley. How you doing, Dave? As general manager. Come on, John. Several people backstage and many people on the internet took to criticizing Adam Lee, and rightfully so. Mike Adam Lee is the Raw General Manager. I gotta be pretty honest with you, this makes me kind of sick to my stomach. The new Raw General Manager, Mike Adam Lee. What the fuck, no to be Mike Adam Lee? GM? Seriously? Pretty much Mike Adam Lee is pretty hateable. You know, without even getting on the mic, the crowd hates him, so he... He can generate heel heat without even doing anything. I hate you, Mike Adam Lee, and the WWF for making you the general manager of Raw. You know what else? Everybody else here hates you, too. Right, John Barry? Hi, Mike Adam Lee. And Mike Adam Lee. We all fucking hate you. You know, Mike Adam Lee has been messing up WWE since April 2008. Almost half the year by now. That man is the worst person they have had working for that company within the last year. And you fucking should die. You should die. And you should not be the general manager. Of Raw. And we have to fucking do. You can't just issue death threats. Forget all the haters. You're still the man. What? You are still the man. Forget everyone. Go right. listen to him. You're the man. No, I listen to him. It's okay. Yeah. You know what? Because you learn something from the fans. That's right. They, they tell you if you're screwing up. You know, you can't do this overnight. If you've never seen this before, it's not like football. It's not like baseball. You're not allowed to call the action. You got to tell. Them. That's right. Right here. Right here. Right here. You're the man. You're the man. You did a good job. He'd continue to make mistakes on a daily basis. And I, I say that opinion and the opinion of Batista, I wanted to become the first general manager to reign neutral. And it's not because you need it, remember that. It's because you want it. That's aggressive, you maybe kid, a little too aggressive. You, but, kids, uh, you kids have a good time. You see, I, I have to defend a title that night. That's what I intended to do. Had a title match an idea for a title match. You ready? You ready? I'm not gonna let it happen to me. And the champion will face, the winner will face the champion. I'm getting a little emotion here, Shane. Yeah, Randy Orton delivering an ultimatum of I let Randy Orton guess th get the best of me. This happened so often, it pretty much became his gimmick. And at some point, it became hard to distinguish what was shoot and what was a work. Was he actually screwing up, or was he booked to screw up? He was like a modern-day Sid Vicious. But you know what I know! I have half the brain that you do! The constant laughs he got from people listening to him made the company wind up booking him as an incompetent joke. Ultimately, he remained in the position for only three months before leaving the company altogether. And man, what a three months that was. Three months of my life I'll never forget. I am resigning as the general manager of Raw. Mike Adam Lee is a guy who practically fell up the ladder of success. He failed on his way to the top, and every time he screwed up, he was given a higher position, which made him that much more disliked by the fans watching. And I'm sure some of his co-workers weren't pleased about him calling their moves wrong, mispronouncing their names, or just getting a vast majority of things he said incorrect. The Mike Adam Lee era was short-lived, but by far will be best remembered for being the worst. But to his credit, whether intentional or not, 
And most likely it wasn't. It was fun. It was fun. I mentioned before that he was the Batman and Robin of wrestling. But the thing about Batman and Robin the movie is it's fun to watch. I mean, sure, yeah, not in the way it was intended to be, but it's fun nonetheless. Sure, I'm not going to credit it as the greatest Batman movie of all time, but I'll tell you what, if I have a group of friends over, I'm putting that on every single time. Every single time. And they hate me for it. And that's actually why I don't have friends. But I think my point stands regardless. It was fun. I had fun. Thank you, Mike. Mike was the definition of so bad it's good. I tuned in religiously around this time just because I wanted to see what he'd do next. What line would he flub up? What cue would he miss? What mistake would he make? And I'll tell you what, the guy never let me down. Not once. The guy never failed in failing. He never let me down in letting me down. Nowadays, at the time of me making this, Mike has come forward about suffering dementia and epilepsy and potential CTE issues, which is sad because no one deserves that but also because Mike always seemed like a genuinely nice guy. A sweet dude who was in a little over his head. And wait a second. No, no, hold on. He's 69? This motherfucker's pushing 70, and he looks better than me at my prime? God damn, ain't that a bitch? Look, Mike, I'm, I'm sorry that your interior isn't working the way it used to, but god damn, man. But god damn, man, you gotta let me in on the secret now how you keep your exterior looking like a brand new model. Good on you, man. Good, good on you. Just good on you. Perfectly quaffed head of hair. Fucking bastard. I mean, look at you. 70 years old, and the only sign of aging is that you have crow's feet. Dude still has a full head of hair, too. Look at that. That's just, that, 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 that's just not fair. That's, that's, that's just, that's just not fair. Well, let me tell you something, brother. You're watching the Social Injustice Warrior, V Infuso's channel, dude. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too want to become a V-tard, don't forget to like and subscribe, and click that little bell icon to get updates and notifications. Ooh, tell him what up, Mach. Ooh, yeah. Follow the man on Twitter, yeah, because we all know it's not stalking if it's on the internet, yeah. Join the madness by joining the Discord, and if you have a moment of time and a free dollar to spare, head over to the SIJW's Patreon, dig it, where you can request videos, get exclusive videos, and early access to content, yeah. Or go down to PayPal, where you can buy the shirts, brother. But most importantly, just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're, you're missing, missing out. out.